Welcome to the Keys of the Kingdom Streaming Ministries of Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries. I'm your host, Pastor Apostle Michael E. Snooks, and we're extremely excited about uh, sharing with you again, extremely excited about us coming together again around the Word of God. We thank God for all the awesome things that the Lord has been doing in our lives and the awesome things that I pray that He's doing in your lives also, that we're coming to the place of getting to know God and His will, uh, His uh, universal will and His personal will for us. I just pray that that uh, God's best and you are attaining, you're entering into God's best and the most blessed uh, uh, as you continue to walk with Him. We've got an exciting word for you tonight, and we're going to jump straight into it, praise God, after we open with a word of prayer. So uh, I'll pray with me, if you will, for just a few minutes. God, our Father, I bless you and I praise you and I thank you. I give you honor. I give you glory. I, I just magnify you. I exalt you. I extol you. I say you are the great king of my life, the great God of our existence, the God of our times, the God of our seasons, the Father of all creations, the essence of all creation. So, Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus Christ and by your divine, holy, and magnificent spirit. Uh, and we just come to you, dear God, uh, today, uh, uh, thanking you and praying that uh, uh, for your blessing and for your, uh, for your hand to be upon these teachings as we go forward. Uh, not that anything might be done in our own glorification, but that all might be done to your glory, God. We pray you now for revelation and insight and the spirit of discernment, all of these mighty things operational uh, as we go forward. Heal somebody, help somebody, deliver somebody, dear God, and we will be careful to give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor in the magnificent and the mighty and the awesome name of Jesus Christ. We say amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God Almighty. Well, once again, we thank God for uh, uh, this time that we'll be sharing together tonight. Praise God. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, we're praying that God is going to bless you. Uh, we're asking you to uh, 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 let somebody know that the Apostle Snooks is on the air and uh, subscribe to the ministry and also uh, like the ministry comment uh, so we can uh, respond. Uh, can, we can have an interactive kind of thing going. And uh, uh, we know that uh, our, lo our learning and our growing and our walking with God will be of a blessed sort in Jesus name. All right. We're going to start a new series tonight. We're calling it The Father's Name. The Father's name, praise God. And um, I haven't uh, uh, heard a lot preached on this before, and I was just in my prayer time, and it was just a thought that came to my my mind. And and uh, as I was concluding, just kind of where we where, where the Holy Spirit wanted us to go in terms of the broadcast and the teaching. This th this thing began to re resonate. This theme, the Father's name, began to resonate within my heart. And you know me, I'm I'm an, an I preach apostolically and prophetically, always uh, looking for God's leading. The Bible said that they that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. So I'm always looking for God's leading. Uh, God, what are you saying to our generation? What are you saying? to the church? What are you saying to the peoples? And uh, 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 I believe that this message captures the mind of God, captures the voice of God as we move forward. And uh, I think it'll probably be a two or three part series, but we're going to jump into what we have for you tonight. And uh, so we get this concept, this idea or the thought. Uh, can, usually when God gives me a word, uh, when the Holy Spirit is dealing with me about ministering something, of course, he always gives a scripture. So the scripture that I have uh, as a theme scripture is Revelations chapter 14. 
Revelation chapter 14. I know some of you say, Oh, Lord, Apostle Snooks, he's not going to preach unless he's going to preach out of the book of Revelations. Well, I believe <laughs> the book of Revelation has so much, so much pertinent information for us in these days and this season as we move forward. We just need to examine, give the Holy Spirit a chance to speak to us regarding. I don't necessarily preach it like everybody else. Everybody else don't necessarily preach it like me, but I can only preach uh, according to what I see. And uh, 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 again, I don't claim to know everything, but I claim, praise God, uh, to be a son of God. And I claim, praise God, to be concerned about the lives of uh, the young believers. I believe in my call is to help to bring them up to full maturity, full age. And so we go forward uh, in the, in that capacity. All right, Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1. And it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood in Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, this is a, a, a powerful piece of, of scripture here, and it takes a lot of mending and, and searching, uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. It takes a lot of looking here and there, Old Testament, New Testament, uh, Gospels, and the full book of Revelation to get some uh, clarity concerning uh, 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 what is actually the context, what is the, the Scripture actually speaking of in this place. And I know the traditional uh, 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 teaching about it when I learned in Bible school is that this is after the church has been raptured and this is Israel when this is the nation of Israel's people who finally uh, full nation finally comes to God and and this is them standing in Jerusalem well we're, when when we're not going to teach it uh, uh, that way we're going to teach it basically as one of the last places that uh, uh, one of the last places that God will command us and and for us to move into his next things, uh, 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 we're going to uh, discover. Let me say that again. One of the last places that God will command the church, that God will command the people of God uh, regarding moving into his next things and the re and and and, and that, that's that's a powerful and potent and you can always ear earmark uh, apostle snooks by those things because apostle snooks is always going to be talking about God's present working in our present day but it's bridging into other things and how that he is the leader he is the head of the body of Christ and that uh, he is vitally interested uh, uh, in our lives. Okay, so uh, uh, in this particular verse of Scripture, where it talks about uh, uh, having the Father's name written in the foreheads, it's not really talking about uh, people who has something uh, literally or physically written in their foreheads. Uh, foreheads is used here as uh, when you see a people, uh, it's that portion of their uh, 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 their countenance that causes you to recognize them. So having the name in the forehead meant that when you saw them, they you could tell that that they were they were uh, uh, they were in, in action and working on behalf of the Father because you what you saw when you saw them was the Father's name. The Father's name is not necessarily talking about Yahweh, Jehovah, Elohim, or any of, of those things, and it could be, but it's not necessarily specifically talking about those things in terms of name here. It's talking about all the Father is. If you said that uh, 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 Apostle Snooks has a good name in the city, we're not just talking about Apostle Snooks, that title, that reference. You're talking about all that I am, all that um, 
refers to 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 to, to all that refers to my life, my actions. If you said, uh, uh, he, I have a good name, it's it's referring to everything that I am, not just the alphabetical title, but everything that I am. So these people, uh, uh, when they the thing that it causes you to the thing that you recognize when you saw these people here in Revelations fourteen one was they had their father's name all that God is and all that God is doing and all that God has done was recognized in them this is typified by the forehead the forehead being the part of the countenance that you see when you when you you, you look at them it's the initial uh, a, a part of the countenance that causes you to recognize their identity, who they are. These are the father's children. They have the father's name written in their forehead. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about these things because when you're going to see, you're going. To, uh, I want you to get a grasp of uh, of the Father and the Father's love. We all know the verse of Scripture uh, uh, in the book of Saint John, where it says, "For God the Father so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him would not would have everlasting life and not perish." Now, uh, uh, the, and the key to that verse is for God, for God so loved. The initiator, the originator, the one who got everything started, the one who uh, uh, displayed the first love is God the Father. God the Father. We're talking about the Father's name here. If you want to recognize and understand who God the Father is, God the Father initiated uh, 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 the work of the work through Jesus Christ. Now we know that there was a, 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 a one called the Word of God who existed before uh, uh, with God before the foundation of the world. We find that in the book of St. John where it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That is the ideas, the thoughts, the, the, the mind of God, and we know that that Word was made flesh, and that, it, that, that was Jesus. When the Word came into existence and uh, um, became seen of man, it was Jesus being born. But it, it was the Father that initiated, uh, that, call, that call for the Word to take on flesh. It was the Father that had the plan. This is the mind of God. This is the, the name of God. And when we're considering that, we have to we have to understand that, that from the Old Testament beginning uh, uh, to the New Testament endings, it's all about the Father's name name. And the, the Father's name manifests to us in many different ways. When you think of the term uh, in the Old Testament, when, God, when the Bible said, let us make man in our own image, it's a term called Elohim. And that term is letting us know that God takes on a pluralistic nature. In other words, when he said, let us, us is plural. He said, make man in our our is plural and here God he is letting us know that he operates in a pluralistic nature and this this is important for us to understand because you'll see God some people say father son and holy spirit we know that that this is the manifestation of God in different dimensions and realms, but we know that it is the very God who, who has ordered all these things. So the, the, the idea then, again, in that theme scripture that we read, is that God... Uh, 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 God is being manifested in the earth realm uh, through a group of people. And these people are standing in the high places of Zion. Now, uh, uh, again, if you look at Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1 will teach us something like uh, it's called the revelation. Let me read it for you really quick. It's the revelation that God gave uh, 
Revelations in chapter 1. It says that, chapter 1 and verse 1, he says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Did you ever consider that this, even this displace after the death, burial, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ, that after all of that took place, after Jesus had walked, in the earth, became a sacrifice, descended into the hills, came back up in the resurrection. After all of this, after all of this, the Bible says, when Jesus ascended, listen to it again. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him. So Jesus, remember Jesus said in the book of St. Matthews, and I'm not going to go there today. I'll probably go there next week. I mean, or, or, or in St. Matthews chapter 24, when Jesus says, uh, they asked Jesus a question at one time about the end time and different things that would occur. And Jesus says, no man knoweth the day nor the hour, not even the son of man. But he says, only the father knows such things. And uh, 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 this idea is that everything is ushering forth from the Father. When we begin to see uh, Revelations uh, 1 and 1, we find that after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God the Father continues to show his love, continue to to share his mind, continues to share his plan. we, We read in 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 revelations 1 and 1 he says he says the 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 revelation that god gave to jesus christ to show unto his servants now it's it this is after the death burial resurrection jesus's ascension god is still god doesn't stop because the the the, the resurrection has taken place god doesn't stop because the ascension take place god doesn't stop because jesus Jesus is no longer walking in the flesh on the earth. We see God now continuing to talk. God now continuing to give revelation. God now continuing to give understanding to humanity about who he is, about his 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 concern and his care for humanity, about uh, 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 those things that are about to occur uh, shortly in the earth realm. It's God whose great love now is, is, is still manifesting after the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and the ascension. It's God Almighty who is still uh, 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 speaking. He's still speaking. I want to show you a little bit about what Jesus thought about the Father when he uh, was was there. And I want you to keep in mind, this is going to be over in St. John chapter 17. And this is one of my favorite chapters of scripture in the in the whole of the Bible. And I, I, I'm 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 God. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can read it kind of fast because uh, in order for you to get the gist of 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 what I'm teaching, you're gonna need to um, you're gonna need to um, uh, uh, understand how Jesus saw the Father. And not only how Jesus saw the Father, you're going to need to understand because as we go over into the book of Revelation, we're going to begin to see God begin to speak new things. God began to speak, but he speaks them through Jesus, and Jesus sends them to uh, his angel, and the angel brings it to the apostle John, and the John brings it all to us. But it had to do with the essence of it all, the foundations of it all, uh, has to do with everything proceeding from the love of God, everything proceeding from the Almighty One, everything proceeding from the immaculate, magnificent, uh, unnameable, un, uh, 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 comparable, uh, uh, everything proceeding from this God. So, St. John, look at how Jesus looks at the Father. We've already read over in the book of Revelation, and we're going to come back there 
Uh, if I get a chance today, uh, 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 Jesus, uh, it, it, it teaches that this is a revelation that God gave after the resurrection. Keep that in mind. God gives Jesus a rev- resurrection. At, God gives Jesus a um, he gives Jesus a revelation after the resurrection. He gives Jesus a revelation after the, the, the resurrection. He talks to Jesus after the resurrection. Gives Jesus his mind after the resurrection. Give Jesus his, his word after the resurrection. But now I want to show you how Jesus thought about uh thinks about the father before his death and, and burial and resurrection. Okay, St. John chapter 17 and 1. These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Jesus begins to approach the father and he said, Father, I need you to, I, I, I want you to do what I've been sent here to do. Look at verse 2. And thou has given him power over all flesh that he should ha- give eternal life to as many as thou has given. Jesus knew that God gave him power. Jesus knew that he was made a high priest and Jesus knew that he was going to become a gateway and a door to anyone who wanted to come to God. He knew that over all flesh, his priesthood would uh, uh, exist and that any man, whosoever would call upon his name, whosoever would would call upon this work uh, that God had administered through him. He knew that they would be saved. Verse 3, And this is life eternal, that, uh, uh, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus wanted us to know the only true God. Jesus wanted us to know the one that sent him. Look at verse 4. I have glorified thee in the earth. I have I have finished the work which you gave me to do. God, he said, God gave me a work to do. Now, remember, we already looked at uh, uh, in Revelations chapter one. God began to speak again after the death, giving him more instruction, more understanding. But here he is before the death. We find out that God was already speaking. God had already sent him. And God was now God had already magnified a word in him. And Jesus had already walked in an obedience to that word. Look at verse 6. I have manifested your name unto men which thou hast given me and that and have re- and they have received them and, and, and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that you did send me. Jesus said, I have manifested your name. He didn't manifest the name, uh, the, the, the alphabetical tower Jehovah, the alphabetical tower Yahweh, the alphabetical tower El- Elohim. He manifested uh, who God was and who God, what God was doing and, and what God was saying. He manifests the mind of God. He manifests the love of God. He manifests the grace of God. All of that is the name of God. And Jesus said, I have manifested your name. You see, 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 God behind the scenes operating everything on the scene. It was God that was working in Christ, uh, reconciling the world unto himself. Look at verse um. Nine, I pray, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Everything that believes on him. Verse 10, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. You see, you can't, you can't tangle up uh, uh, God and, and, and God and Jesus. Jesus says, everything that you've given me, I give it to you because everything that's mine is yours, and I know that everything that's yours is mine. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing as you study it out. Look at verse uh, 12. While I was in the world, I kept them uh, in thy name. Those that thou hast given me, uh, uh, givest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Hallelujah to God. Verse 13. And now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they may have joy 
uh, my joy fulfilled in themselves. 14, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil that's in the world. 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 17, sanctify them, Father, through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Verse 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so also send, I, send them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone. Uh, uh, Jesus said, for, for their sakes, for the, for the people's sake. He, I sanctify myself unto God for their sake, because you're doing something in me. You send me. So I set my, that's what the word sanctifies me. I set myself apart for the use uh, 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 the use of God. God called me. God built me. God designed my purpose. God designed my identity. God released me. And I yield myself wholeheartedly to his will uh, uh, for their sakes. For their sakes. Look at verse um, 21 again. That they may all be one. Uh, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be, uh, 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 that they, that they, uh, um, the world may know that, uh, where did I go, Phil? Okay, uh, and the, <laughs> look at 21 again. They that, that they all may be one as Father, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. 22, and the glory which thou gavest me, I'll give to them, that they may be one in us. I in, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and, and, and thou hast loved me, and that, and that thou hast and thou has loved me. Uh, verse 24, Father, I will not that they also whom thou hast given me, uh, uh, I would that thou, those that thou hast given me, uh, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For, the, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee. And and these have have known that I have that you have sent me, and I and I have declared unto them thy name. Verse twenty six, last verse. I have declared unto them, them thy name, and will declare it, and the love wherewith thou lovest loved me, uh, may be in them, and I in them. Okay, so I read all of that to show you Jesus before his death, burial, and resurrection, and what he thought about the Father's name. Now, that's powerful, because we see here the Father instructing Jesus, sending Jesus, equipping Jesus, uh, giving Jesus the mind of God, the plan of God, the power of God, the ability of God, the, the potential of God. Helping Jesus to know his source and everything. And Jesus understands all of that. It all came from God. One time, some people asked him something, and Jesus says, uh, No man knoweth that, that, that thing that you're asking me. Only the Father. Even I don't know. But here we see the instruction of the Father coming to Jesus Christ, saying, this is how I want you to walk. This is the, the season that I want you to walk in, and here's where I'm taking you. By the time we get over into the book of Revelation, where we have after the death, after the burial, after the resurrection, after the ascension, then God begins to speak to him again. God spoke to him about the plan, the purpose in the earth. And then as we get after the death, burial, and resurrection ascension, God begins to speak again. God begins to tell him about those things which are shortly coming to pass. God began to tell him about the next 
moves that he's going to make, that his name is not just associated with before Jesus died. His name is associated with after, <clears throat> after the death of Jesus. Get there. I'm, I'm closing out on that one point right there. The name of the Father, the name of God, is not just associated with before Jesus died. We know it's associated with the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ because Jesus came to reveal unto us the name, the mind, the plan, the business of God. But it's not just associated with Jesus as he walked in the earth. It's associated with Jesus after he ascends in heaven. Now, can you receive the ascent? Then you can you receive the mind and the name of God as he walked in the earth, but reject the God who 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 is talking, who is speaking about uh, uh, things now regarding the ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. I'm praying the day is a conceptual message. I'm giving you information so that you can see it and understand. But I want to pray that God will activate. He would activate this message in you to the extent that you would fall to your uh, knees and you, or you would lift up your hands and raise your heart before the Father and, said, and say to him, it was you all the time. It was you all the time, Father. It was you all the time. And then I want you to say, Father, I praise you through the name of Jesus Christ, through the work that you sent uh, this man, Jesus, to accomplish, through the blood of Jesus Christ. I praise you for it. And then, Father, I receive now uh, your name uh, as you continue uh, with your business in the earth with the human family and with the earth itself. I'm going to give you the praise. I'm going to give you the glory. I'm going to stand in your presence until you teach me. I'm going to stand in your presence until you raise me up. I'm going to stand in your presence until I have a full understanding. Bless me, God, in my lifetime, and I'll bless my children. Bless me in my lifetime, and I'll bless other sons and daughters of God. I give you all the honor. I give you all the glory now in the name of Jesus Christ, by the glorious and great name of the almighty, magnificent God. Amen and amen. All right. Wow. Amen. Seems like I just, I don't know, I need to go back to one hour teaching. <laughs> Got so much more to say to you. Don't miss our next teaching, which will be part two of the Father's name. It's going to bless you in Jesus' name. It's going to help you to, to come into uh, not just the relationship with our master, Yeshua, but the Yeshua, Jesus. Jesus is attempting to help us to understand uh, the Father. He, he was always doing that. Jesus has always been helping us. You know, yeah, say, if you, I, if I, Father, I have manifested your name. This is not something I concocted in my own strength or my, my own mind. This is your will, God. And I, I, I've come to, to, to do your will. I want you to remember, praise God, all of those affiliates that we're associated with coming Monday through uh, Thursday and then on Sundays also. Um, uh, 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 that that could be a blessing, praise God. You never have to be without the, red, without the word of God. Remember that we're on Tuesday nights at 7, then uh, uh, also on um, uh, Sundays at uh, 9 a.m. and then Mondays, uh, intercessory prayer with Pastor Elaine Brown um, on uh, Monday nights at 7 p.m. Then uh, you can catch um, uh, Pastors Ephraim and Carol Salteris on Thursday nights, uh, Unlimited Faith and Favor, uh, uh, a Bible class, uh, Signs and Wonders and Miracles. Uh, we believe for uh, in Jesus' name. You can see their telephone information on the screen. Apostle Fred and Melinda Bell. Amen. Uh, who, who are a uh, powerful teaching ministry, um, a man and woman of God who's um, have been teaching for many, many years and uh, will bring you into the university of God's things, uh, which is a blessing. Remember us in your tithes and offering. Praise God as the Lord leads you to do so. Amen. Um, 
uh, you'll find the the uh, information on the screen, uh, the PayPal, and also the Cash App. Uh, and as you do, praise God. Uh, we believe that God's going to bless you. Uh, you are the blessed. You cannot be the cursed. Head, you'll never be the tail. Above, you'll never be beneath. We thank God for you. Praise God. Keep us in prayers. We pray for you in Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed. We say shalom. God is on your side. God bless you. Shalom.